you know, family owned little, you know, kind of sweet shop. This is like sweets and truffles. I don't know why they're together, but anyway, yeah. <laughs> sweets and truffles <laughs> um, and tea and stuff like that. And this is one of the um, reviews I found there years ago. So um, it says, I bought a packet of salted licorice here, which was marked as strong. <laughs> 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 Hey everybody, welcome to another week of Community Notice Board Podcast, the podcast about suburbs we grew up in, local landmarks, hometown heroes and coming of age tales. We have a very special guest this week, comedian, football player and <laughs> podcaster in his own right, just celebrated 100 episodes of Ooh, Must literally. Watch with George and Alan. It's George mm. Pettifer. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, uh, mate. I'm good. Thanks so much for having me. I like that you said um, uh, areas that we grew up in. And this is probably what ten thousand miles away from. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, but oh, no, but Jamie might you're be closer. Well, yeah, yeah I, le- I left England probably around the same age as. Oh, I left when I was seven. Okay, so. a bit before. Okay, mm. so we're so Georgie boy from yep. the UK. Whereabouts in England? So I think I told. I think I said New Forest. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, so make New it Forest a bit easier. Is, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because I feel like every street has its own town name in England. It's like yeah. it just keeps narrowing down to be this little hamlet. So you. So like. The smallest area, mm-hmm. what would you call that? That was that Hordel? My, was that my house? No, um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> literally Hordel was your house. Everyone's like, well, I, yeah. I lived um, at first. I lived in a village called Milford on Sea, yep. and then I lived in a place called Hordel, which is like even smaller than Milford on Sea mm. somehow. But that was more. It's they're such small places all close together that you're really a part of the wider area mm, more yeah. than. You know, you wouldn't say, oh, I'm only from Milford on Sea. Right. Kind of thing, yes. Know? So there's like 10 houses there and then yeah. you've got to share yeah. a fucking <laughs> suburb and a postcode. Yeah, yeah, but you've exactly, got to go yeah. across town to go to the shops. Yeah. You can I stand in Hordle and talk to someone from Limington. New Limington. You know, nearly Limington. Yeah. yeah. Limington. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, oh, no. we, speak, <laughs> we speak the Queens <laughs> on this <laughs> Every episode we assume the pronunciation and always wrong. Yeah, we yeah, just yeah. never check. Limington. The thing about something like Hordle, though, that is different to here. It's like you can be like, oh yeah, I grew up in Hordle. It's this tiny little village. It's probably the size of like uh, like half of Stanmore. And they're like, oh Stanmore, yeah, cool. And you're like, it has forty pubs in it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Milford on Sea has like five pubs, and there's only like four thousand people there. So, like the ratio of pub to person and in Milford on Sea is ridiculous. It's all old people that don't go out anywhere. And it's not how- like that's the pub district of the wider district. <laughs> you know, it's not like Newtown. It's like everywhere. Has this fucking isn't King's pub. Cross. Yeah, 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 this yeah, is yeah. Milford on Sea. Man. There were yeah, a few yeah. articles about <laughs> Limington being a snooty town where it's like the yeah, one. there's one place that's open till 2 a.m. and most people are like, oh, that's kind of more of a ta- the next town over. Oh, yeah, I, I, got, I got a great one from. <laughs> so is Limington the snootiest town in Britain? This is yeah. a BBC article. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and <laughs> this woman is uh, upset, and I don't know what this story is, but I believe it's just like a like some sort of Target or a Kmart thing. So it's like yeah. Pippa Redmond says that an Argos store would Argos. Lo- Argos store would lower the tone yeah. and claimed it would be more appropriate somewhere in Pennington. <laughs> yeah, no, that's classic because uh, Pennington also is like so close as well. Like yeah. it's basically the same town. I like love- they just want to differentiate it. But that was always a thing. Like there's no really fast food places apart from a Greg's, which is like a bakery yeah. on there. And then they wanted to open a, a pound store, just like everything was, well, they, you think everything's going to be a pound. Really, I mean, everything is exactly a pound. So it could be 10 pounds, but not 10 pounds. Yeah. It's, like, <laughs> so, it's, <laughs> it's so dumb. <laughs> this anyway. is 5,000 yeah, pounds. Yeah, exactly. We like round numbers. That's all we're going to round but, up. Uh, there was like a big, um, uh, you know, the local community were up in arms about, oh, it doesn't fit the nautical theme of the town. <laughs> so, nautical so, theme? So, so Poundland just added a fuck off boat on like, <laughs> next <laughs> Oh man, smokies it fit right in with yeah, the Yeah, that's great. I love it. And so she's just like, we already have a Woolworths in the center of town, yeah. which is like that's Woolworths. The UK is more like a Target, right? It's more like yeah. A this community. must be pretty old because they went bust in the in two thousand eight yeah, yeah, financial right. crisis. Well, know. she says people who want to order things of that ill can, can shop there. <laughs> it's, like, it's not drug yeah. deal. Yeah. Like, it's like they want a VCR or something. Yeah. Yeah. Toaster. No, they're, they're real proud in Limington of their high street and it being like a classic English high street yeah. with like nice little shops. It did like look that. very like storybook when I yeah, looked at the pictures. It is exactly like, I got like ID'd in a Woolworths once for trying to buy a VHS of Friends season five, episodes five to eight. <laughs> <laughs> because it was wow. 12 and I was... Uh, mm. 
12, but I was yeah, like, yeah. I don't have a driver's license. Like, I, had to, yeah, like, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> so I went, I went outside to my grandfather who was having a nap in the car while I was shopping. I was just like, can you go get it? And he was just like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh I mean, he worked him all up, but he came back with the VHS and the I end. said, you need friends, Jamie. <laughs> Not in mean this. That's what, that's what I took it to mean. But yeah, the friends? worst thing, because I got a... Uh, I'm not sure if you've heard of this story, Georgie, but there's a there's an article about a place called Fords of Limington. Oh, okay, I don't. And this uh, because, um, like you said, when they were trying to bring in the pound shop and stuff, they also tried to bring in a popular pub franchise called Weatherspoons, yeah, right, which they'd yeah. been against for years. <laughs> yeah, and I think in 2012 <laughs> they finally um, they got it through and they yeah. uh, took the place of this place called Fords of Limington, which had an article that is just so fucking British. It's like <laughs> br- it's brilliant in how British and like stupid it is because yeah. the store is known as in Limington at least as the rudest store. In Britain, okay. like Britain's <laughs> rudest store. Mm. And the first quote is like, what are you doing in the shop? The owner barks at an innocuous looking gray head woman. You know, you're banned from here. <laughs> <laughs> <It's just> like, <laughs> but then it's like, so it keeps, it just gets more English. It's like in most stores, customers would object to such an abrasive <laughs> welcome. But like, so they, they just talk about how it's Britain's rudest shop and they've had to find like, uh, they've had to find a new shop, but they're celebrating how rude it was. They okay. even got a plaque up that said it was Britain's rudest shop. <laughs> <laughs> and then so, and they had a, they have a sign that says like, it just says, it says here like star, 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 star off. So I assume it's probably not fuck or even piss. It's probably yeah, okay. like flog off or yeah. something. And they're like, oh, yeah. awfully rude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they said, so they like, they said when it was going out of business, like only a full few weeks left before we go out of business, come by, we'll insult you. Yeah. But here, like one of the, um, one of it, it says like on this account, so the thing I just said where he told the woman that you're banned, they're like, yeah. oh, that's a joke. Yeah. On this occasion, it was a joke. But Terry is just joking with a regular customer. But there are many times when the partners mean it and are directing honest barbs at unpleasant shoppers. <laughs> like honest this one barbs. a few weeks ago, for example, when 61-year-old Jeff told one rather rude and demanding woman who said she could not wait to be served because she had a doctor's appointment, while you were there, will you ask him if he's got anything for your bad temper? <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> oh, wow. Talk, talk about rude from downtown. <laughs> this guy's got an acid. This time. guy, he never goes home and thinks I should have said that. You know, like he's never laying in bed like I should have told that. Bit. It's so funny because there's like five paragraphs of this, like the most watered yeah. down rudeness, and then they like mention like what they're doing afterwards, and uh, like. They're going like they're like on motorcycles going down Route 66 in the US because oh, they have yeah. a pirate radio station. No that, way. Like, used awesome. to go out there. So it's like two sentences dedicated to maybe the most interesting thing in their lives and yeah. five of them occasionally be like, you know, we didn't even say goodbye to that. <laughs> <Yeah. lady." laughs> what, what did they actually sell there? What was, was it a pub? No, Before? it was a, like a general store, like Nick Nacks, basically. Yeah, yeah, right. Nacks, yeah, that gets your blood boiling when you're selling Nick Nacks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, love, um, I love the Pennington, um, Lymington, uh, you know, the, the snootiness because in the Pennington Wikipedia page, it has a section called, uh, it says, uh, Pennington was... Pennington was locally nicknamed Donkey Town. <laughs> <laughs> it is understood from locals that this was due to the number of donkeys that would graze around. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, that's clearly written from someone. Well, that's, uh, the, that's <laughs> the thing about uh, the new forest is there's just like livestock just wandering around the streets. Mm, right. right. So there's just like horses and like bulls and shit like this just walking around. Mm. And, and then like they kind of allude to there, Aggressive donkeys that have been <laughs> that have been fed too much. They were they're a bit of a pest, to be really? honest. Really, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. So great. I love it. But I, yeah, I mean, it, is terrifying. Like just well, yeah. I meant because for me, so I moved here when I was eleven, and I went. I did a year of college when I was fifteen, sixteen. So I actually went back. Right. Which is what I attribute to keeping so much my English accent is because like just when you're like starting to lose it as yeah. a teenager, yeah. I'm like fucking back in there. Like, <laughs> Reset. Back in the <laughs> mood Reach talking on. to people, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we walk from college to the shops. I'm walking past like huge bulls and stuff like this. It's, it is scary, but you kind of get yeah. used to it. They don't attack people. So right. it's fine. Just I, don't wear a red t-shirt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. I, um, I love the fucking names of these towns and I couldn't help myself when I was like looking for like new, because there's so many towns and 
This is just in Hampshire. Hampshire's the county, right? Yeah. yeah so in much. Hampshire County, the, the t- Never Wallop, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Itchen Valley, uh, yeah, so Ragged Appleshaw, that's a town, <laughs> Snoddington. I just love these towns. That's Snoddington right. seems yeah, that, like a nickname. Yeah, 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 yeah like and what they call people for Just that, like yeah. outside the county as well, in like Dorset and stuff, it's like yeah. Upper Snodsbury, uh, <laughs> Pu- Puckle Church. This one's my favourite. This is in Leicestershire. Barton in the Beans. <laughs> These all sound it's, like confectionaries from Harry Potter, know. like, you know, made up fucking Bart, candy. Barton in the beans. I don't understand it. Wet Wang. Is Barton a great in the one. beans. <laughs> Wet Wang. Wet Wang. Wet wang. <laughs> but this one's my favourite in Dorset, which is the county next to um, Hampshire, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, there's a town called Puddle Town, uh, but it, it actually changed it from Piddle Town. <laughs> they, they had a council meeting where a long council debate solemnly decided Piddle Town should be replaced with Puddle Town. <laughs> <laughs> it's just completely <laughs> changed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we only want to change one letter, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We've only got enough money for one letter <laughs> change to the town. Uh, but yeah, it's in Hordle. Uh, and what t- school did you go to? Did you go to Priestlands? No, uh, so I went to I went to Milford on Sea Primary and then I left and then when I came back um I was at Brockenhurst College. Right, okay. Because Priestons is like basically the between uh primary school and college kind of right, thing. So okay. the college was like only for A levels. It was He's yeah. a really left field person who went to Priestlands. Mm-hmm. The fucking uh, bathwater girl from the internet. You know that uh, oh, tub, what? tub girl? Tub Belle Bell Delphine. Belle Delphine. Oh. Yeah, you're yeah. kidding me. Is no, that true? That's a hundred. She went. She she lived in Lymington while she did all that. How old is she now? Uh, well, she is twenty three. Twenty ninety nine. She was born. Okay, so she's a bit. She'd be a few years younger than me then. Yeah, but, but she was selling that was Lymington <laughs> bathwater. That's what it was, baby. Yeah, oh classic. my god! Oh, no, no wonder it made her so famous. Yeah, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> the beautiful Lymington water. Yeah, exactly. yeah well, course, Lymington is proud of its water in the I top know. sides. They have the open air baths. It's but it was like the it was Roman going through all the celebrities, and it was like just like league two football players and yeah. goalkeepers and then the weirdest Bell's internet Bell's celebrity of all fucking yeah. time. I went for a way different guess with Tub Girl. You said the bar yeah. girl's like, oh, Tub Girl. <laughs> <laughs> I, guess, I guess that reveals a lot more about yeah. you. Yeah. 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 A student of rotten.com <laughs> over here. Well, also, um, born in Milford-on-Sea is Frances Fisher, the actress who was in Titanic. Oh, okay. So I, I don't, some old bat. Yeah, yeah, yeah some old bat. <laughs> the one who plays old Rose. Uh, maybe. <laughs> no, not the... She, she's red hair. She's got red hair. I know well. she means she's... I think she was like born there and like left immediately kind of thing. Yeah, right. Okay. Is that... Is that? Do you know that because of like town pride at the time? Or? <laughs> Most people don't even know. I mean, it's on the Wikipedia page. And if you talk to anyone from... The, well, everyone from there is like over 80. I mean, <laughs> Titan- oh, yeah, Titanic I is that like that a new film. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, that new film, Titanic. Yeah. Well, they don't <laughs> want to talk about it because they were on the Titanic. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Too I close know to exactly home. who Francis Fisher is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's, mm. she's fairly famous. I mean, born in Milford yeah. on Sea. Mm. There you go. Very so cool. the one other celebrity that, uh, which I think, uh, fuck, I keep saying it wrong. Is that Lymington? Lymington. Lymington. Fuck. Okay. L- Lymington is uh, Ben Ainsley, who's like yeah. an Olympic. Is he? Do you know of him? Um, yeah, yeah. Well, because I I can see the picture of the uh, the gold thing. The, the gold. Um, so this was a box, big yeah. scandal. Oh yeah. Which. Um, <laughs> So basically, he uh, he's a sailor for the Olympics, and he won like five gold medals during the 12, 2012 London Olympics. Yeah. And then the Royal Mail decided to, uh, every gold medalist from the UK, uh, they would paint the mailbox gold from the town they grew up in. Right. And so everyone... Uh, was so excited. Uh, we finally, you know, there's our local yeah. boy who grew up there. And then they decided instead to paint some post box in like Cornwall or some other place where he grew up. Yeah. And everyone was furious. <laughs> yeah. And then this guy from the, he, he uh, this guy, Robert Smith, 51, he was a restaurateur walking home from work one night at 1.30 a.m. decided to paint the yeah. uh, uh, fucking post box gold himself. Like walking home at 1.30 a.m., you think he's probably a bit pissed, you know what yeah. I mean? So yeah. I'll tell you what, the heat, because I, I was around that time, like I went to the London Olympics, I saw the speed walking. <laughs> Very pretty, cool. Pretty wow. rubbish, but no, it, it was cool to be there. But then, um, but then that following year was like when I was in Limington doing college, and it was just one day I was in Limington, and it like caught my eye this post box that had been painted gold, 
but like so shitly. Like, <laughs> it's not like it was one thirty. He was obviously drunk. Like, yeah, it was yeah, so yeah. bad. He was just playing and then, yellow or yeah. something like that. And then later that day, it was like on the news or whatever. But yeah, yeah it's not like he was committed to it. It was some no. conspiracy to paint it well. well. I love that he just had paint on him. Like, <laughs> but, you know, he, um, <laughs> but he, then, but then he got arrested. Uh, so he wasn't allowed to do oh, it, and he got arrested. Robert Smith. But everyone they painted it. Right? Yeah. Th- so then they yeah. got there was a big uproar, and they're like. You know, the Olympians a small town. Did they not, get the Olympian involved? Yeah, and they uh, rang up and asked him, and he's like, just fucking leave it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't give a yeah. shit. I'm a fucking sailor, you know? So they're like, Olympians <laughs> a small town with not many heroes. We're very proud of what Ben has achieved. So they're just holding on to this one yeah. guy who yeah. fuck. Oh. It's like, we got the bath girl and this guy. Like, give us <laughs> yeah. something, you know? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, um, there's not many. I mean, it's sailing. I mean, people that come from Olympians, what's like polo? Equestrian yeah. sailing, like <laughs> yeah. you know, there aren't many football that's coming <laughs> from them. Yeah. or something yeah, yeah, like yeah, that. Exactly. Yeah. What do Pretty you do? And what do you do for fun there when you're a little kid? Are you wandering the streets? So what I remember is running through fields. But it, well, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it sounds idyllic. <laughs> the start well, of the I remember. Um, I don't know. The problem was that where I lived, well, for, at first when I lived in Milford on Sea, like there were kids like around the village that I could have met up with, but like I was too young to like leave the house on my own. And then we moved to Hordle and we're just like in the middle of nowhere, it felt like. Like, it's not like we were in the village of Hordle. We were like out in that, all the way down a main road. So like, Hordle was a big smoke, you know? <laughs> yeah, Hordle <laughs> was like big. We were, it, it, I it's got it like, Greg's. <laughs> I remember mum let me walk to um, Hordle once and that was like a big deal. And it's literally, it's like a. <laughs> 20 minute walk maybe she just got well, a bindle and yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> goodbye mother I shall be seeing you she can see yes. the whole way yeah. up yeah. Yeah. George is oh, in yeah. horn <laughs> wave to George everyone <laughs> did you guys ever do that when you were a kid and you'd run away from home no, oh, never. I remember th- threatening and then running down to the fucking letterbox and sitting there and just yeah. looking out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, they better come down and get me. <laughs> <'cause I'm mad." laughs> yeah. I used to do that shit all the time. What run away? Run away constantly. Oh, yeah. And um, what's the furthest you got? Uh, one. The furthest I got, I took my dog with me, and mm. we went to like one of the main highways, and then I started walking along that, and I was like, "This is." Too much. Like, yeah, I, yeah, I, I don't yeah. do any, so I went and sat in this tunnel. Uh, mostly, I just went and got it on the roof of the house and hid up there for a while. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, or when I was real, <laughs> like your parent, your mum knew where you were. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when I was real little, I did the letterbox thing. But then next door to us, there was a karate center, like so fucking dojo. And that was the spot. I was like, I'm running away. And then mum yeah. was fine in the karate and I'm like, kicking yeah. leaves. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go run away, learn karate, <laughs> kick mum's ass yeah. if she comes yeah. at me. <laughs> the dojo's like, he's our boy but, now. Yeah. N- nowadays, you couldn't even go out to the letterbox. <laughs> Your mum be like, oh, he's booked a fucking Uber. Get him in there. <laughs> <laughs> you just get in the car and disappear exactly, forever. The beat, yeah. my, friend always, my friend Mitch Anderson, who's come up on this before, has, always makes fun of me because one time he was, it was like a Friday or I think it was school holiday or something. And I called him and was like, man, stay at my house night we'll fucking be playing playstation he's like i'll be there in five minutes his mum drops him off and he like knocks on the door and he walks in. he's like where's andrew mum's like he's ran, ran away <laughs> <laughs> so mitch is like, <laughs> mitch, mitch is like <laughs> hanging out with my mom they're playing playstation and uh, i like finally got home but the reason I he's run away. I got away, I got away like I got home like two hours later. So I mean, the reason I the, the reason I ran away is because Mum made a salad sandwich and uh, her salad sandwiches are phenomenal. And I took one bite and all the filling like spilled out the bottom, so the sandwich was ruined. And I was like, "Fuck this family! <laughs> I'm leaving! I'm out of here!" You just come back and you're like, sorry, Mitch, there was a salad sandwich. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was trying to keep you waiting. I hope mum wasn't too annoying. Mitch is like, I understand. I, would, I also love it. Oh, I'm a bit furious. Yeah, I actually ate the slop from the, the <laughs> fell out. I mean, I, uh, here's some vandals uh, in Hordle. Uh, mm-hmm. Did you hear about oh, this? No. This is huge news in Hordle. Vandals in Hordle spray sheep and goats purple. So they uh, <laughs> ran around and they spray painted these sheep and these oh, goats. And oh, everyone's yeah. furious. And they also <laughs> spray painted the words Chris... W, Darren, and Les on a nearby <laughs> train. I think we might have known. We've got a short list of suspects That's here. like 15 people. <laughs> and on Facebook, everyone's like, all these like, you know, people who've watched a lot of true crime, all these, uh, you know, <laughs> mothers and stuff are like, we should look at the school, for the Chris's and the Darren's and the yeah. Les's. And they're like, <laughs> cops are like, oh, that's a great idea, Sharon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They like also- a photo of it. It's like Les and it's like, 
Chris has tagged Les in the yeah. photo. Yeah. <laughs> got to the bottom I just love how it's, Chris, it's Darren Les and Chris W. So he <laughs> was like, I, want him, I don't want Chris, Chris L to get my credit yeah. for the goats. Yeah. <laughs> and they also, and then it just says also a phallic symbol was also left on a tree. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, just yeah. say like, I wonder if this is connected. Yeah. <laughs> purple, purple, let's get the lads to run. <laughs> Same die. Nah, miss, that was Chris L. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, a man. phallic symbol. Just say they drew a dick. You know, <laughs> no one's time. like, oh, oh, I wonder so what So when you're in college in Portal, I <laughs> yeah. assume you were boarding. No, well, I was living with um, family friends. Oh, okay. And I um, helped out for a little while during the summer on that family. Because the family friend, his name was Gary, like the dad of the family. And he... Um, <laughs> I think waiting for you to say like Les. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and he, um, he ran like a, a little... Well, he ran like a ferry in Limington. But it didn't go anywhere. It just like took you to the end of the river and then took you back. <laughs> <laughs> How far is the river? Not far. <laughs> he just like it's like because it's a big tourist area as well, right? So um, and I remember he used to like in the morning, like a Saturday morning, if it was uh, if it was raining and he had to sell tickets for the afternoon, he'd get a blackboard out and he'd just write a fake weather report for that afternoon. He'd be like, oh, clearing up. Uh, you know, clear skies later this <laughs> afternoon. Well, and people, old, old lady to come up and be like, oh, it's clearing up. So we should probably book a ticket then for this afternoon. He's like, yeah, you probably should <laughs> <laughs> get the like 10 pounds and take them to the edge of the river and just take them back again. Oh, oh, and, and just pissing down right yeah. <laughs> And so you worked there? Oh, I, he never paid me, but I <laughs> hung out there. Because <laughs> I mean, there's always to do. So, yeah, I mean, I, d I think the problem was all he needed was someone to drive the boat, which I couldn't do, and someone to tie the boat up when it got back, and I wasn't strong enough to do that. But <laughs> I was just completely useless. Basically. <laughs> George, write the yeah. write the reports, and you're just like thunderstorms. And yeah, you're like, Come yeah. on, George! Yeah. <laughs> Come on, George! Yeah, at least do this, yeah. <laughs> oh fuck, I love it. yeah, I love these sleepy little towns. They're so great. It seems like there's like there's an underlying uh, there is some weirdness though, right? Like. Uh, uh, you guys had some stuff about that, right? Yeah, like, we got a... Um, it's kind of semi-related to the animal stuff, which is mm. way more recent. But I think Jamie's got the oldest... It's basically... There's a long history of, like, occult activity in, oh, really? in the new fo forest oh area. God. You said it is a quite a, a historical area, right? Oh, like really historical. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can start with... Well, straight away, before we get into the um that, that woman that you're going to talk about, Jamie, mm -hmm. there's new forest hauntings. This was a thing, like a history page... And they were saying, like, arguably the most haunted part of Britain mm -hmm. is New Forest. And they were saying, like, thousands and thousands. These are, like, famous <laughs> characters, right? So yeah, I've got some stuff I can say about, like, scary shit. Well, basically, when I lived was um, uh, with this family that I lived with, this close, these close family friends. And um, just, like, across the road, there was an old manor house. Mm. And it's what used to... It's, I mean, like a lot of, like, settlements in the UK, like, it starts off as, like, a manor with, like, the staff yep. where they live. Yeah. And then that just becomes a village. Yeah. A right, hundred right. years later. Yeah, hundred yeah. Like, 500 years later, mm -hmm. it's, it's, like, separated. But, I mean, we walked through the manor and it's, like... Is that the Lindhurst I mean, Park Hotel? No. Okay. I, can, I could probably... F I mean, it's a bit like... I'd, have, I'd be searching for ages. There's no <laughs> way but, um, and there's, like, a bunch of... You walk through the, uh, the kind of forest at the back of it and there's... If you look... At first, you don't notice, but then if you look closely, there's like ancient tombstones, like kind of you know with vines all over them oh, and shit yeah, like this. Right, right. And then if you, I mean, if you talk to Gary, Gary has all sorts of ghost stories from um, <laughs> yeah. from it, this. Everywhere is manner. haunted except the fairy area. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and also, I mean, to get from the village centre in Milford on Sea to where I was living with them, yeah, to walk through the the graveyard of the church, oh, right? Fucking hell. Creepy. Like, and the problem is in the UK, like in the winter, it's literally pitch black at like 4 p.m., mm. right? Mm. And so I'd get home from like school and I'd have to walk through a pitch black 11th century, <laughs> like, yeah. like graveyard and all the, it would only be lit by a lantern in the middle of it. <laughs> <laughs> like, that, like barely lit the whole thing. Right. And I'm not ashamed to say I ran through that graveyard <laughs> every time. I just fucking bolt through the middle of it. I do it now. Yeah. <laughs> it's freaky, yeah. man. It's That's freaky. terrifying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, there's, all, there's a list of famous haunted sort of characters and stories. There's Rufus the Red. Uh, the Bisturn Dragon. Mm -hmm. There's a Rufus the Red lion. got spray painted by local kids. <laughs> <on there. laughs> yeah. Chris W. Strikes again. <laughs> Mary Dore and Witchy White. Um, so there's all these people, and they're all very. Um, Are they know, real people that died and then they're no, haunting well, it? There's or? a mix of that, and right. it's a lot of like, oh, in the 11th century, 
this guy saw a pair of antlers in the ground and he picked it up and it was a fucking lion like with antlers <laughs> oh, yeah. so like okay. now you can like see a lion that's yeah. why yeah. that some of the UK stuff because there is there's real stories from the 11th century yeah. that are true and then there's a story like that we're like ah oh, fucking yeah, yeah, hell yeah. can we just separate the fucking dragon but slaying knows, shit I mean, from the when real I, stuff when I hear, so hear something like that I'm like okay let's imagine like hundreds of years ago where you'd have like estates with like Heart of the British Empire, supremely wealthy families. Mm. They might have had a fucking line. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Like honestly, you know what I mean. Like yeah. they just died. And yeah. So like King style, my yeah. favorite was the um the Duke de Stackpool, who's a, an extravagant and eccentric uh, English aristocrat. Um, held French title and he like rebuilt all this stuff in the Vatican. Like had a pretty interesting yeah. life. Um, lived in this uh, mansion called the uh, Glass Haze, um, yeah. but he ran like a local smuggling operation with his <laughs> yacht, the Gypsy Queen. Just <laughs> nice. yeah, writing fake weather reports. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, and he smuggles beer halfway up the road, <laughs> then comes back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, um, it's a big smuggling area because yeah. it's like borders the Solent, which which goes up to Southampton, which is like the main kind of back in the day like. The main port, almost, and, and the you'd UK. have to pay taxes in at right. Southampton, and so if you didn't want to, you'd you'd pull into shore there right. and then smuggle. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, pretty much. So yeah. then they built a well, Hearst Castle, which is in Milford on Sea. It's a huge castle that sticks out into the middle of the Solent. You can walk there like from Milford, and uh, it was basically built to stop <laughs> smugglers, right? <laughs> but like, it's not. It, they call it a castle, but it's. It's a fort, really, like an 18th century right, fort. Right, but it's still right, pretty right. cool, I don't know. Um, yeah. This bloke died at the at Glass Hay, so he died at his house, which is now known as the Lindhurst Park Hotel, and it is just okay. a big, beautiful, old sort of manor house. Um, but then, so it just sounds like they did trivia on a Tuesday, though. Yeah. <laughs> like, like come down the Lindhurst, yeah. uh, you know, <laughs> schnitzel um, specials. And he, this, you know. His ghost is essentially is supposed to, to haunt this place to this day. And there's all these stories like stretching way, way, way back. Mm. Um, apparently on the night of his death, you can hear music in parts of the buildings from the yeah, annual cheers. ball he holds <laughs> for the dead and all this stuff. But my favorite was, um, so supposedly his face can be seen staring through the windows of the house. And during extensions in the 1970s, workmen reported him appearing to them and screaming at the changes they were making. This might have just been the foreman, man. Yeah. <laughs> 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 a few beers deep, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. But that's the thing You just do something crazy You're just like Oh fucking ghosts You know yeah, If you yeah, have yeah. too many And you trip Pretty over much. Ghosts You know Fuck I um, I'll I tell you this them. I um, This is kind of, oh, Well kind of off topic I remember uh, This just come to Actually like When I When I Was at primary school In Milford They opened a uh, The new Because it's so many old people They need like An actual proper hospital In this tiny like mm -hmm. Like I mean It's a small hospital But it's like a legit one Kind of And um and the grand opening was meant to be attended by some of the royals, right? Wow. So everyone in the uh, primary school, we all went down the wall given little Union Jack flags to wave. Like, <laughs> you know what, like you see when yeah, they arrive yeah, at places. Yeah. Britain is so lame. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so little kids. Yeah. Like, yes. Well, and then it's like raining and we're like stood there waving our flags and they never showed up. <laughs> 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 as, as we're walking back, as we're walking back to the school, like through the rain, the whole motorcade like came past us. They were just running late. Right. So we, we never got to see them. They like go through a puddle, splashes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Those birds uh, just flipping the bird. <laughs> I think That's it was, uh, I think it was, who's the oldest son of the queen prince someone or that? I don't know. It wasn't even a good one. You know yeah, what I mean? Like yeah, it wasn't yeah, even one of the ones you wanted to some see. Some C grade royal. Yeah, something. yeah. It gets yeah. soaked yeah. to the bone. Or something. <laughs> it's re yeah, it's, le it's Les. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 probably. 200th was. in line to the third. <laughs> <laughs> and they just didn't get Gary's weather yeah, report. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, it's going to fucking piss down. Fuck. Uh, oh. I love that. And so it's a very like royal, um, pro-royal area, very... Pro British Conserv area. Conservative. Conservative, that's the word. Yeah. Yeah. You George, you had a review, right? Because we've got oh, yeah. some some uh we love the good old uh I, I just love this town because I just think it's so like when you read these fucking articles, like I I've got all these little silly articles. Like there's yeah. they're just such stupid local news. Like because there aren't real issues in this place. Yeah, that's so, basically the gist of it. Right? So yeah. you know, uh, it's kind of fun to live in like a fairy tale <laughs> town. <laughs> this is, this a like, oh, the big, huge scandal! We're out of gingerbread. <laughs> yeah. well, this one, this one. Limington market trader ordered not to shout. <laughs> so, <it's> like, <laughs> <laughs> so this guy and it's got Mr. Bellows who runs a fruit and vegetable Mr. store. Come well, on. There they go. It says the warning was absolutely ridiculous. 
and ironic giving his given his name. Uh. And he just and he's got a quote from this guy. All I say is the usual things like strawberries for a pound. <laughs> and it's, oh I must fight this for markets everywhere. He's so upset <laughs> about it. And then there's this row over like. This one town, there's another t- Milford on Sea versus Everton, which is not Liverpool Everton, but there's a little Everton yeah. nearby, right? Yeah, Everton, yeah. Tiny little Everton, and there's a massive row because two different communities who uh, grow competitively grow big pumpkins are at each other <laughs> about the ru- about the rules. Fuck yeah! And then like one village is accusing the other of uh, cheating because they're they're growing their pumpkins inside, and da 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 da. Yeah. And then it says like <laughs> they went back and forth about it, and then it just says the social club at Milford organised a meeting to thrash out the rules of the competition, uh, to which no one turned up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even these people don't give a shit. You know, it's just all this. So Dude. you so you've got this review, but I just well, love these like. No, nah, it's all it's all dumb stuff like that because it's like it's so insular as well. Like mm. people. Um, I don't know. I was t- I talked to my mum because I left when I was eleven. I called my mum and I was like, "Tell me the new forest. Like, what's what some stuff that what's I can the like, you know?" Yeah, yeah. Uh, but she was saying, you know, people. Well, in the new forest, there are cattle grates around the p- whole perimeter. Mm. Basically, every road is like fenced, and then a road has a cattle grid, so none of the livestock can just like run to London and yeah. Yeah. Set, right. stage a coup or something. But um, yeah. So there's this whole thing like. Like, oh, if you have to go somewhere that's past the cattle grids, wow, you've had to go a long way. Yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. like a 35 minute drive, yeah, you know? yeah. which to Australians is like crazy. But I mean, you can drive the whole country well, that's in six what I, hours. I, so. Yeah, because I was freaking out because I was like towns, towns, towns. And I found something from like, you know, Milford or wherever. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, well, George isn't from there. But I just did a map yeah. to the place that you said you're from. And it was like an eight minute walk. It's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like, the same fucking place. And it's like zoomed in, but it's yeah. like so condensed. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. so weird. Now, yeah. well, I got this um, review. I found this years ago and I've just always remembered it because there's a, there's a tiny little shop. I mean, it must just be a, you know, family owned little, you know, kind of sweet shop. This is like sweets and truffles. I don't know why they're together but anyway yeah. <laughs> sweets and truffles um, and tea and stuff like that and this is one of the um, reviews I found there years ago so um, it says I bought a packet of salted licorice here which was marked as strong <laughs> 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 When I opened them and tried one, it was disgustingly salty and inedible. I immediately took them back and asked if I could exchange them for something else, but was told that it was my fault because the packet was marked as strong. (laughs) I replied that the packet was not marked as very salty, which would have been more accurate. (laughs) I had been expecting only a strong flavor of licorice. I had been addressed by the owner of the business like an animal abuser might address a dog. <laughs> what? I would not come to their assistance if the business caught fire, and I hope they go to the wall as soon as possible. Oh my <laughs> oh, god! Oh, oh. <laughs> wow. Oh, yeah. that rules. So, <laughs> so, I mean, I you know, know what? I'm on their side, though. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah, I'm on the side of the truffle dog. Yeah, it's so strong. I know. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. And he addressed me as though an animal abuser might spray paint a sheet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, exactly. You're buying salty licorice. Good luck to you. You know what I mean. You I mean, be... licorice is disgusting anyway. Yeah, yeah. 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 you're taking a risk every time you open a <laughs> thing of licorice. I've um, never been like, this licorice is weird. Could add a little bit of salt would help. Yeah. You know. I've also never been like, oh man, this is not licoricey enough. No. <laughs> yeah. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Kirky, should we take uh, George into the wonderful and scary world of the occult? Yeah, oh, sure. Yes, Although this isn't really the occult. This is just cult. Uh, <laughs> but it starts with an urban legend. So I guess that's kind of a cult. But uh, it, it it also seems to be, like, doing a little bit of reading about it, it seems to be weirdly, like, tenuously connected because the urban legend doesn't really seem to have much to do with the actual story beyond the fact that the woman kind of looked a little creepy. Right. Okay. So uh, this is the story of Mary Ann Girling. Okay. And the New Forest Shakers. Okay. And this is in... Oh, yeah, so you go. No, but I... Well, I, so this is a, the, the urban legend... This sounds like a 2000s Britpop band. The yeah, new, yeah, the New, new Forest, forest yeah. Shakers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the New Forest Shakers. We've <laughs> got to get up. <laughs> Playing at the Lindy Park Hotel. <laughs> <laughs> is, you know. Big hit on Live and Kicking. Um, and So this is like a... But some this guy Michael O'Leary put out this book in 2011 called Hampshire and Isle of Wight folk stories because okay. Hordle is relatively close to Isle of Wight. Yeah, just across cross the, the, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, 
But and, I'll, and I'll go with the ferry if you need. Yeah, yeah, yeah he'll yeah. get you halfway. <laughs> <Yeah. Yeah. laughs> <laughs> but apparently, like, this urban legend went around in the 90s through teenagers. Uh, like, uh, so, so teenagers in New Forest had stolen money. They'd panicked upon hearing police sirens and they'd thrown the cash in the local graveyard in uh, yeah. that area okay. to pick it up the day after. <laughs> um, it was as the leader of the gang turned back towards his car that he saw something terrible at the churchyard gates. There was the tall, gaunt, angular figure of a woman wearing a long black Victorian dress and a large black bonnet and she was jumping up and down just repeatedly jumping up and down and the, so the young man he panicked and he just didn't know where to go so he just went in any direction he could and but every time he looked behind him there was that woman just jumping in place up okay. and down <laughs> seems more yeah. annoying yeah. 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 just like cut it out uh, yeah. I'd have been like why are you jumping <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, are you excited yeah. 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 she's just like I found all this money yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> So the story ends the next day. Like the, the police end up finding the guy who stole the money who ran from the apparition. And he's crouched in the fetal, fetal position, rocking backwards and forwards, and he's just laughing and crying at the same time. Mm. And this that apparently is the spirit of Marianne Gerling. But Marianne Gerling, like her story is interesting, but it's not really supernatural at all. So basically she was fairly unremarkable growing up. She was a woman that people described as intelligent, but she had limited access to schooling. So... You know, she wasn't like an academic or anything. She was married at 16. Uh, what, what era? Is this is in like? the 1800s. Okay, yeah. Okay. So she was married at 16, which is pretty, pretty cool. cool. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> old spinster. Yeah. Let's go, man. Yeah, yeah. She, so she was Lock getting sticking. on a bit. Um, she had two children. She had like a bunch of miscarriages, uh, which is kind of what she was known for around town. Collective. No, she was known for around town. Yeah. Old miscarriage <laughs> girly. Maybe I paraphrase that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but oh, so now I know her. She's <laughs> oh, she's, oh, she's the one oh, on the 1800s. Oh, this guy is Oh, why would you say? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so now she's 31. She's been married for 15 years. She's really getting on a bit. Yep. Uh, Christmas Day. She experiences a vision, her first vision of Jesus Christ. After eight ports. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so then, like, um, fairly soon afterwards, she has a second vision that um, tells her that the second coming is at hand. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she also, at this point, starts speaking in tongues. So okay. it's probably 11 Normal. or 12 ports. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But she also... Is this all uh, the same night? Yeah. <laughs> she sees the first admission, but she's the second one speaking in tongues. Yeah. Then I woke up in like a puddle. It's really weird. <laughs> yeah. um, so uh, this is a bit creepier, but she develops stigmata wounds, like on her hands and feet. Oh, wow. yeah, she which, fell over and broken glass <laughs> on the ground yeah. after 12 yeah. fucking ports. Um, so she kind of like is like, fuck. <laughs> I've seen him, second coming, stigmata. Yep. I got all the answers. And she starts uh, She starts preaching. And okay. because she's kind of got like a magnetic personality and has all these, has like the wounds on her hands and feet and stuff, mm. people are kind of like, oh, fucking oh, girl yeah. and goes off, you know? Yeah, so they start. That makes sense. Local council tried to get her to keep her voice down yeah. there. Stop, <laughs> just, stop shouting so much. I mean, kind of, yeah. yeah. She all became, I keep saying is we're all going to die in a fire. <laughs> <laughs> well, burn in eternal hell. <laughs> Which she did. She became like a local sensation. Started drawing um, like large crowds. Mm. Okay. And so, like, so you're going to say yeah. phallic objects? <laughs> <on this. laughs> <laughs> yeah, she spray painted less yeah. here. Not a lot of sales for a bathwater, though. I imagine. <laughs> yeah. So like, uh, she's kind of um, equivalent to today's evangelical preachers yes. like she's yeah, loud definitely. she's in the middle of the places like preaching like gospel and the second coming and that's not imagine but the church was super happy no no she got banned by uh, <laughs> yeah, methodist okay. chapels uh yeah. but it was by in part due to her style of preaching an eyewitness who called her the high priestess of jumperism <laughs> <laughs> which is very english right the woman prayed volubly and used her long arms freely in gesticulation actually screaming in a way which i thought might have caused a jump or two <laughs> so like uh so uh, uh, apparently it, then it gets quite out of hand as well. Okay. She then it gets out of hand. This is all fun so far. and games. Yeah. And, until and this is where the story gets a little bit crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so she's going off like this. She's know, like uh, one of those car yard yeah, sale yeah, yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and then um, basically one of her sermons gets into like a violent like scarful. 
because a hundred people are trying to get in this like overcrowded hall, and though like there are people inside trying to escape, and oh. then like a brick came through the windows. People <laughs> were throwing rotten eggs at Girling, and um, basically the followers of Girling just kind of like switched off the lights so Marianne could sneak out the back door and run off, and okay. people be like, "She's divine. She's got the answers." <laughs> oh, from yeah. uh, so basically. Um, at this point, this was kind of like above Hordle. And at this point, she's got like 50 to 100 followers. And she was like, fuck it, we're moving to Hordle. Oh, right, and, okay. Which is where she settles. Um, and she buys a place with uh, this person called Miss Julia Wood. It's um, a property known as the New Forest Lodge. Oh. And they gave like a, they gave a few thousand dollars for it. And here, Gerling kind of becomes like the leader of the cult. And basically, she... Um, she says that through it, there's like a whole like death and rebirth thing yeah. where like if it, once you die because you're a part of the cause you will in effect be immortal. Mm -hmm. They also like are completely celibate apart from like an oddly weird thing where they all kind of kiss each other on the mouth, degrade okay. each other. <laughs> yeah, we, no, everyone does that in Hordle. It's still done to this day. <laughs> yeah, I, I clicked the source and it said they're just British. Actually. Yeah. Um, but basically, like. Um, it's a great way to build a cult. No one can have <laughs> sex with each other as well. They yeah. just all fucking die. Yeah, but you have well, to kiss. Well, it's also yeah. interesting to see, like, you know, the more things change, the more they stay the same, you know, because, yeah. like, the, the, they kind of go about their own business. They're in this gigantic house, but, like, there's a lot of them in there, and it's the same as now. Like, if you got a bunch of crazy weirdos in a house, you're like, ah, oh, they're all fucking in there for sure, yeah. which yeah. is, like, what everyone in Hordle was saying. It was like, right. They're doing demonic shit, and they're all having sex, but, in fact, like, Girdle had outlawed sex. And, mm. and also, yeah. by this point, she had left her husband, like, when right. she was like, divorce is allowed then. <laughs> well, she, it was kind of like an amicable thing, apparently. She was like, yep, look, I'm a prophet. And the guy was like, yeah, all right, then. See you later. And this is so, not a woman I, not a woman I married. You know? yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Well, it was also like, because they were basically kind of like a self-sustaining community. They grew all their own produce on the farm. But because um, Girling was also a staunch anti-capitalist. Oh, really? Oh. She wouldn't let the cult trade their wares that they grew so oh, so it's a little commune almost yes except mm. they still owned property that had a mortgage so they oh, very fair. quickly went broke <laughs> 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 oh god look at us for capitalists <laughs> <Mary. laughs> these dumb communists <laughs> don't have a mortgage didn't have a commune uh, Mary's accountant's like come on Mary <laughs> so one so tomato <laughs> yeah, so they had all this fruit and veg and they're like we could save the building and yeah. she was like nah get fucked and yeah, they couldn't yeah. have eaten it all like they would have grown too much. So it would almost, have like rotting food. Come almost to make more. <laughs> <laughs> So basically it fell into a debt. They got evicted. It's like the dead cold of winter. So, yeah. Eventually like Girling gets declared insane. <laughs> and the woman, Miss Julia Wood, who bought the place in her name also gets declared insane. Is forced to spend like 25 years in an asylum. The so, woman who bought her at offer? Yes. Yeah, so, no, no, no. The woman who bought it in her name. Oh, who was like I a see. follower right, of Girling. Right, right, right. Um, so I've never heard any of that before. Yeah. So basically, like, eventually what happened was, like, Girling was like, we're going to keep moving and stuff. But there was nowhere for them really to go. They started camping on, like, roadsides and stuff. They were offered, like, sheds, but there wasn't enough room for them. In the shed. Fol yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Followers kind of started to fall off. And then they got a farm, I believe. And they, like... They erected like some huts in there and like a place to worship. Yeah. And uh, Girling actually public. I don't, I don't know about the the rent uh, the real estate. It's like I don't. Your rent history is not great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't start a commune again. Like. <laughs> How are you still feeling on paying the rent yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah. transactions? And it's at this point as well that Girling apparently like publicly announces to newspapers she's like getting people like journalists and being like, by the way, like I'm a divine being. She's right. got some PR savvy now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. And eventually. She, um, because of all the moving around in the dead cold, she gets quite sick. And for, a, in a, like a very uh, sadly ironic turn, for a place that, like a religion that she started that's so focused on like birth and death and rebirth, she gets cancer in her womb. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> right. Which is eventually what kills her. And oh, so, hold, 
Why are they the Shakers again? Uh, the Shakers was a name given to them. They didn't actually like that name. Oh, right. Okay. Uh, it's, it's like to, do with the, <laughs> to do with the sermons and stuff. Oh, like, yeah. So right. excited. Yeah. Yeah. Jumping and shaking. Theirs as well. was more just like <laughs> a generic, like, we're followers of the message or something yeah, okay, like okay, that. Okay. And so, yeah, she gets a uterine cancer, cancer of the womb, and she dies. She's buried in Horde or Churchyard. Okay. Uh, large community turns out, but, like, by that point, like, by the time she died, there were only six members left of the cult. They kind right. of were like, all right. Let's pack. Let's yeah. Yeah. Let's fuck. Let's yeah. finally yeah. fuck. Yeah. 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 Mom's dead. Let's finally fuck and let's pay my op just pill. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really behind. I I mean, no data. There's heaps, there's heaps of fascinating articles on it. So we so, kind of like skimmed over. So hold on, she was buried in Hordle Graveyard? Yeah, so George yeah. would have run no, past no. her screaming every night. Not quite. It's the different... Milford on Sea is the one that I used to run for. Oh, right. yeah, Hordle, yeah. yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, you would have skipped through Hordle. Yeah. 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 Like, well <laughs> lit. I'm picking berries in Hordle. Uh, well, I got yeah, a guy. That's crazy. Um, this is a dude. So a lot of when yeah, the reason I say a cult is because there was all this myth making about occult activity and witchcraft yeah. and Wiccan sort of um, people in the forest. That was like a huge thing that went. Yeah. Um, it was supposedly you know stretching back you know years and years. And this guy, uh, Gerald Gardner, uh, also known by the craft name Sire, was an English Wiccan and an author. Um, and this guy is essentially is effectively like a cult leader, but he started this tradition of Gardarian Wicca. Similar, yeah. so similar sort of, you know, had followers. And I've got to show you this guy because he looks <laughs> like he looks like the KFC colonel's gone to a bush doof. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it looks like a troll like when, the, yeah, yeah. when the tab starts to hit, like and, that's he's, what it looks and he's got like a, it's a pretty classic story. Born into an upper middle class family, and then he just develops all this interest in you know, Freemasonry and Alistair Crowley, okay. Satanism, that whole like thing that seemed to be turn of the century got very popular. And he basically claimed that there was a pre-Christian witch cult in the area, and he this he was like, "I'm reviving this tradition of of a oh, witch okay. cult." And that's we're a gonna smart way to do it. Don't say you're starting it; just say you're reviving. <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, 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 exactly. And it's very funny because all these people are the same people, no matter which age you go back. They all have the same traits of like, um, you know, he only married once to Donna, and several who knew him made the claim he was devoted to her. And then you scroll a little further down, and it's like talks about how he um how you know he started when she died he got all these asthma attacks and you know he was so devoted he couldn't live without her uh, and then it was like you know having said that he was known to cuddle up to his young high priestess after <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. so this so, guy's uh, trying to fuck everybody that is one of the main drivers behind starting a cult yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, sort of it seems to be not for good or- and yeah. for the time um it is quite funny that like because it would have been there would have been a lot of religious people who have freak out about people like this like this is satanism and and, and uh according to brickett wood who was uh i'm sorry brickett wood coven member uh frederick lamond gardner also used to comb his beard into a narrow barbiche and his hair into two horn-like peaks <laughs> giving him a somewhat demonic appearance um and With apparently his red cape and his uh, pitchfork pitch um apparently he was like surprisingly lacking in charisma for someone at the forefront of a religious <laughs> movement um and weirdly he was like an arch tory like he was like oh, really? super supportive of the conservative party but the group that he ran right so this is him starting his Gardarian wicca there was a group called the new forest coven and that was a group of witches who met around the area of new forest in the early 20th century um we'll skim over that (laughs) (laughs) a group of witches (laughs) 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 playing quidditch um my favourite part. <laughs> they really need to install a skate park in this town. Those kids <laughs> yeah. and this, everyone's like, nothing to do. And they're like, just, oh, um, we're witches. So <laughs> they, they would hang around and do their like silly little fucking Wiccan thing. I don't know, throw flowers around and, and uh, probably fuck each other. Yeah. Uh, but then there was the, the infamous Operation Cone of Power. Followed by the Operation Bong of Truth. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is Gardner who uh, he would reveal little about the coven and its members uh, although he did claim that in August 1940 during the midst of the Second World War they performed a ritual known as Operation Cone of Power which they hoped would influence the high command of Nazi Germany to prevent them from invading Britain okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. ah, well it worked they won <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we got two options: D Day or the uh, <laughs> <laughs> Send the Witches. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a tough f- choice, Winston. What are we going to go with? <laughs> There's a funny bit in his one of his books where he writes, 
No, I'm not saying it worked, <laughs> but I did witness. <laughs> like, yeah, he basically says, like, yeah, I fucking won World War II with my cone of power. Um, and it's very funny. Like, he he noted that he noted that several of the older and frailing practicing witches, oh, sorry, older and frailer practicing witches died after practicing the ritual. Uh, something that was confirmed by uh, Lewis Wilkinson, another coven member. So you're thinking, like, oh man, this is pretty powerful it's actually like people are shaking they're dying that you know yeah. it's like something out of dragon ball z you know yeah. like a big yeah. come ama together uh <laughs> but the person who confirmed that yeah in fact people did die uh claimed that it was because they'd performed the ritual naked without goose grease on the skin to keep them warm so they all got pneumonia and stuff. <laughs> 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 it's poor old people oh my goodness means yeah. the cold is just <laughs> killing religion and horde yeah. <laughs> Uh, who packed the goose grease? Anyone? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody, you said you were going to bring it. Oh no! Yeah, I've never heard. Of, I don't never heard any of that. I guess that's the problem. Like when you when you go to school in the UK, like there's so much history to learn about in a way. Mm. Like you're not going to worry about the local, the crazy shit that happened like oh, down the yeah, road. Yeah. You know? That's the funny thing about like growing up in Australia is like we'd 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 hear about the the crazy old prostitute down at the bus stop like who it was yeah. just like a like just a yeah, sex yeah, worker yeah, yeah. Like, that old and everyone to make myths up about her like yeah. oh she wants bitter guys <laughs> fucking dick off or yeah, something. Yeah. and it's like you have to invent bullshit because yeah, yeah, like yeah. something nothing else has fucking you know happened there but then fucking uk you've got all this shit underneath just happening even in the 40s well yeah and there's around. stuff happening now so this is from 2020 uh 20th of january 2020 uh sheep impaled on pitchfork and left next to cross in latest occult killing in new forest oh, oh no right. chris w Lord. Struggle well, again. No, no, no. <laughs> Dead set. Because I think this is. Oh my! I mean, that is surely there's purple on there. I think we're getting to the bottom of this. Oh my! Should we call the? I don't know. Sharon from like Horde or Community Group or something <laughs> yeah. probably put this together. Get Sharon on the line. Yeah. But yeah, oh. there's like a spate of animal killings and like quite oh. quite gruesome and That's people horrible. like leaving them on the side of the road, but they're spraying like pentagrams and like 666 on the side of the sheep and shit. <laughs> but that, that colour of purple definitely matches. So I think we're on yeah, to something I here. Think so. Chris that w. is dead set, the same fucking yeah, purple. Yeah. I don't know how no one's drawn those together. Uh, in that the case, that's that, in, um, ooh, good like, question. It's down the fucking somewhere road. Somewhere in New Forest. Can yeah. we ID this sheep? If we're, if village it's the of, same yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's know? do face uh, map. Yeah. Village of Cadnam. <laughs> Cadnam. Cadnam. So I don't know where that is, but it's yeah. somewhere in the New Forest. I'm yeah. sure that they fucking... Oh, Bramshaw is another one that was... So it's happening all New over forest. New Forest. Yeah. New yeah. Forest. Fucking... Yeah, yeah I've got... And a, that's crazy. I was just going to say, I, just, I suddenly remembered that... I listened to the Billy Darcy episode of this yeah. just before, talking about Manly, and that reminded me, Lindhurst. So opposite Manly um, Wharf, there's like a bit of wall with a plaque next to it. It's mm. like a bit of wall surrounded by other wall. So yeah. like, like a bit of wall has been taken from somewhere. Yeah. And um, it's from Lindhurst, the New Forest. Oh, really? Because like some f- like founder in Manly, like commu- big community guy when it was founded was from Lindhurst, UK. So wow. it's a little little bit of the New Forest. So in he Manly. just dragged yeah. it out on the boat. Dude. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> he's trying to put his <laughs> overhead in the fucking. Yeah. Like, what is he doing with his fucking yeah, wall? Yeah, twenty three kilo yeah. limit. He's like, oh, I've got a wall. Uh, I'm, I'm wearing the wall actually yeah. as part yeah. of my jacket. <laughs> um, and the, so That's crazy. The last thing as well with this, which I'm fucking putting mysteries, uh, putting clues together like a fucking um, Sherlock Holmes over here because uh, churches were also like vandalized. So 666 sprayed on the door of the church. Uh, but then here we go. A number of phallic images were also painted. Oh, oh no. no. We've got the, that's the, I got the MO. We're going to have to see Chris W whip it out and show us his <laughs> cock. <laughs> and like, do, a, yeah. that's how you, <laughs> do a match. Just draw your own weird looking cock. Yeah. And you're like, oh, I shouldn't have done I that. love that there was a quote, a quote from a local as well who's like, there's been witchcraft around here for hundreds of years. The new forest is well known for witchcraft and black magic happening. But this has obviously gone up a level. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. They never stooped so low to kill lives. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they just wanted goose grease. They started killing <laughs> fucking geese. Oh, uh, shit. That's, uh, that's crazy, man. I've got one more thing yeah, to drag us into the modern age okay, and something so. that might appeal to all of us. Just because uh, we're, we're all f- uh, football fans here. Yeah, we're avid Believe- footballers ourselves. Yeah. And <laughs> if you haven't been watching us on YouTube, you can see our bodies getting in more in peak condition every <laughs> week. <laughs> but, uh, George, obviously the your big team is Southampton, I yep. believe, right? That's right. And so Southampton, obviously, when 
are quite well known. They're a Premier League team now, mm-hmm. and in the nineties, they were a Premier League team. But between, <laughs> yeah, yeah, there was a bit of a blip. But yeah, uh, yeah. in the nineties, they were kind of a lower Premier League team, anchored by the wonderful Matt Letizia, one of oh, the ugliest men yeah. in the world. <laughs> but uh, also, like a basically a style or or football icon to me because he was out of shape, out of shape yeah. old, continuously ugly, called lazy yeah. but well, everyone was like he's one of the he best had no ambition in the world. at all yeah. to go to better teams <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 but he's great but um southampton had one of the most notorious transfers in the premier in premier league history are you across the story of ali dia yeah, I, I've heard about this. I don't know the details. I'm sure we've got more stuff there. Okay, so th- I think Alex knows about this, but Bensley, now that you're a football head, you I might have no get idea. into this. So in 1996, Southampton were a struggling team. The season before, I think they'd finished 17. They'd avoided being relegated to the lower league on the last uh, game of the year. Mm-hmm. Um, and the team that got relegated instead of Southampton in 1995 were a little club called Manchester City, yeah. who are now the <laughs> richest club. They went here. to League yeah. One. They went to. They went down. Yeah, down. yeah, yeah. Well, so did we eventually. Mm. Um, so Southampton, they sack their manager. They bring in a guy called Graham Souness, who's a Liverpool legend for playing. And um, his management career started strong. Graham Souness went up to Scotland, where he coached a team named Rangers. And he led what was called the Souness Revolution because he just basically knew a bunch of people in the English leagues, brought yeah. them in yeah. because. Um, at this point, there'd been a lot of uh, like stadium disasters with uh, right. overcrowding and yeah. Yeah. English yeah. hooliganism. Mm. So Rangers were one of the only teams that was allowed to play in European competitions. So it was easy for Graham Souness to be like, come over here, you can play against Barcelona right. and Juventus and stuff. Right. Uh, so Souness wins four out of five seasons with Rangers in his first five years. And uh, one of his most noteworthy acts, this is a bit odd for how recent it is but in 1989 there was a huge backlash because graham sooness signed a player for rangers called mo johnston and he was uh, a porn star (laughs) 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 no but so rangers is a team historically supported by protestants and they had a policy of refusing to sign roman catholics which mo johnston was so when they signed him people fucking got really upset yeah. this was only 30 or so years ago yeah. as well right. yeah. there's a policy yeah. that Still you can't to this sign day, like people will right. say like uh because i was to work with scottish guys and they the code for if you're protestant or catholic or it was or which was also if you're like a northern irish like loyalist or a you know or a uh, unionist or whatever was who do you support Rangers or Celtic? And yeah. that meant like uh, wink, wink. Right. I don't want to really ask and get political, yeah. but which side of the fence you're on? And that's yeah. just like Catholics were Celtic, huh. and Rangers were Protestants. Yeah. So um, after Celtic, Souness is gone great in Rangers. He gets the offer to go back to Liverpool as his big club there where he made his bones to manage there. Not nearly as successful at Liverpool. Mm. Uh, he brings in... He, he signs Les Johnson. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Chris W. Actually, very famously, Graham Souness didn't get results, but he did bring in a number of people like Robbie Fowler, Steve McManaman, like a lot of people who would go on to achieve great fame. Mm-hmm. But uh, he gets canned. He goes to Turkey, and then he comes back to Southampton. <laughs> Just goes for a party for a week in Turkey. No, no, he (laughs) managed Galatasaray for like a year, but courted controversy there, oddly enough, because like against a team called Fenerbahce, he put the Galatasaray flag in the middle of the center circle, and Mm. they have a rivalry that is, that's not on there. It's literally, even now when you see them playing, it looks like there's just a riot happening all the way around the pitch. (laughs) Like, Like, just absolutely. Like, I remember, like, living in Holland when, like, Feyenoord used to play PSV. Like, the home and away section was not only separated by, like, marshals, but, like, giant perspex barriers between the thing. Which, like, coincidentally... Bang, bang, bang. (laughs) It was the loudest fucking thing I've ever seen. It's great. You're like... My mate Tony's girlfriend's um, Slovenian, and she they went to a Broncos game the other night, and at and in Sydney, obviously against yep. Souths or something. And she and he uh, and he bought her a Broncos jersey for her birthday, or whatever. And she's like, I can't wear it there; they'll bash me. Like she's <laughs> just like, yeah, that's what they do. And like, and like, no, no, that you can wear a Broncos jersey to a Souths game, yeah. and not get bashed, you know. So but, um, yeah. So soon as he he was good, then he's a bit crap. He comes to Southampton. Southampton. 
start the season pretty poorly. They don't win any of their first eight games in Sounds 96 to 97. Right. <laughs> yeah. then, but then they go on a little run. They uh, they, uh, they, they win. They do a jog around the block. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they win. Uh, they don't lose about okay. seven games in a row, right. which brings us to November in 1996. So Southampton kind of have like an injury crisis. A lot of their first team players, their goal scorers are all missing. Uh, Southampton are a small club, so they have very small transfer budgets. So they're kind of looking for whatever they can find at short term to replace the players that are injured. So this brings us to a very famous player called George Ware. And George Ware in the 90s was a fucking superstar. Like he played for Monaco, he played for Paris Saint-Germain, he played for AC Milan. In 1995, he won um, the FIFA World Football of the Year and then won the Ballon d'Or, which is like the most famous footballing person. Liberian, right? You can win, yes. Liberian, uh, if... You don't know what he's doing now. He's the president of yeah, Liberia, yeah, yeah. George what? Ware. Yeah. <laughs> That's how you're making in Liberia yeah. politics. So in 1996, Ware was on top of the world. Now he's just the fucking president of Liberia. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. what a loser. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like when George Ware speaks... He couldn't like, get a commentary career, so he had to become yeah, the president yeah. instead. Couldn't get a football podcast. <laughs> he's like, I guess... Uh, so like basically... You know, when George Weir speaks, people listen in 1996. So Graham Souness, he's sitting in his office for his losing team, probably a cold, rainy day in Southampton. He doesn't forgot his goose grease today. So he's probably <laughs> yeah. just sitting by the fire. Uh, he's trying to come up with a plan for his injury hit squad. Secretary comes on the phone. And Graham Souness is like, hey, what's going on? And the secretary's like, we've got George Weir on the line. And he's like, oh, fuck, George Weir? Ballon d'Or winner, FIFA yeah. World Football of the Year, George Weir. Yeah, I'll talk to George Weir. And so George Weir and Graham Souness talk. And like as they talk, it becomes apparent that like Weir is offering like a recommendation. So Weir has this cousin called Ali Dia. <laughs> <laughs> trying to hook his cousin up with a job. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, so Ali Dia, he's become available. He's uh, played for Paris Saint-Germain. He's played in Germany. And he's played 13 times for Senegal. Yeah. Not, Li not Liberia, Senegal. Um, right. Keep that in mind. Um, also, this played is, rugby, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> also, I should just say, like, this is before the mega proliferation of the internet. It's much harder to fact check or get access to the right. unfettered stats we have access to today. Yep. Yeah. So uh, this guy, he's got the good. Sunus has never heard of him. He asked the scouting network, never heard of him. But, you know, George Ware is on the fucking phone mm -hmm. saying, like, this is my cousin. He's, mm -hmm. Let's go for it. Sunus is like, shit, like, we got no one else. We'll give him a month trial. So Sunus himself said, like, when someone like that gives you a recommendation, you tend to sit up and take notice. So after the call... Sunes signs Ali Dia on a month-long yeah, contract. unbiased recommendation. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, so, the, so the only problem in this whole scenario is George Ware never called Graham Sunes, uh, and George Ware does not have a Senegalese cousin called Ali Dia. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Ali Dia got his mate from uni to call him <laughs> and pretend he was George Ware. <laughs> Ballon d'Or winner George Ware and be like, I've got a cousin from a completely different country, <laughs> you should sign him, he's great. Wow. And Southampton, a Premier League football club, are like, yeah, all right. <laughs> oh, yeah. my God. So We're going to go for it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so Dia has played football. He's never played for Paris Saint-Germain. He's certainly <laughs> never been called up for Senegal. What he had been doing was going around various lower league, non-league European clubs, and pulling the George Ware trick with anyone that would listen. So basically, he would get people, he'd call up and be like, I'm George Ware's cousin, fucking, I'm um, a gun, sign me. You could talk to George if you want. Sometimes the friend would be George Ware. <laughs> you can talk to George if you want. You don't believe me. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> he'd uh, basically trick people in. Get like a month or two contract, stay in hotel rooms, trash the room, like yep. empty the whole mini bar, <laughs> get found out for being terrible, and then vanish. Wow. And when I say oh, like rules. vanish, I mean like most managers who signed him would be like, he vanished and I thought he had died until like three weeks later when I saw him pop up on another team sheet in another <laughs> league. And they'd be like, that's... 
that's our alley deal. No. <laughs> you know, he's not even bothering to change his name. Yeah. 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 He's like, I'll leave it. He so just turns yeah. the light out like Mary Gurley. Yeah. And sneaks yeah. out the <laughs> so, so some of the highlights include like he played for a Finnish club and a newspaper report describes him as being caught offside 10 times in one half and spent the majority of his game ruining his own team's attacks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> then when he deserted the team, they cracked open his apartment and found it completely trash and littered with bones. What? what and the they fuck? weren't sure if they were animal or human. Oh my God. What do you mean they weren't sure if they were animal? Well, we can't he, tell. Let's move well, on. <laughs> <laughs> well, because he'd committed no crime. So oh, they were well, just like, just, yeah, 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 yeah. the human bones around. Like, there's no crime. Um, so <laughs> but he played for Southampton, didn't he? He did. Uh, yeah, I'm getting there. Oh, okay. He does it. So, uh, so, so like, yeah, he, go, right. he goes to some other people. Uh, Harry Redknapp, who's a famous manager, received the call from George Weir. Thought it was a prank call. Hung up. Yeah. Tony Poulos, who managed uh, Stoke, I believe, at some point. He got the George Ware call and they gave him a trial at non-league Gillingham. And uh, Tony Pulis said, we gave the lad a trial and he was rubbish. (laughs) (laughs) So Ali D uh, arrives at Southampton. He starts training. And... To vouch for him a little, there was a guy in Germany that said, like, he played and he scored a couple of times. And basically, he had, like, one move where he'd use that to go around people. But once you found him out, you could stop him every time. And once he signed for a club, he would just not stop partying. So he'd get worse at his own signature (laughs) move (laughs) over the course of, like, five weeks. So he shows up. He's in training. And in an interview with a famous UK football mag 442, Matt Letizia, is quoted as saying that like uh, he trained with us and they thought uh, we thought he'd won an auction prize to train with <laughs> Southampton. He was that bad. And then he turned <laughs> like up. It's a Starlight Foundation yeah, yeah. or something yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. And then oh like he Lord. said, we turned up on the Saturday and he was sat in the changing room. We all thought, that's nice. He's going to watch the game. <laughs> <laughs> so, Got a lot of chicken bones so around this, there. Yeah, so this game, Deer's in the dressing room. Letizia is like, oh, we've done a nice thing. Letizia gets injured in um, about the 53rd minute and Ali Deer gets subbed on. Uh, also, we should keep in mind when I say like George Ware called up and said like this is my cousin, it kind of brings to mind like a youthful, precocious talent. Ali Deer is thirty one years old. Like yeah, this yeah, is the yeah, tail yeah. end of a career in the nineties. Yeah. So Ali Deer, the first thing Ali Deer does, he almost scores. Like <laughs> people forget about this, but like he got the ball and he took like a shot. And it got deflected out for a corner. And if it got deflected the other way, like it could have gone in for a simple tap in, which right. meant his like first touch would have been an assist. Mm. <laughs> and then he'd be the president of Senegal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, unfortunately, that did not happen for him because then he performed for the rest of the game and he was so bad. Five people from Southampton called him Bambi on ice. Yeah. <laughs> and he got substituted within the game that he was brought on as a substitute. <laughs> right. So he lasted about 20 minutes. Uh, two weeks into that month long contract, uh, the contract is terminated and he vanished again. Uh, he left another trashed, unpaid hotel room behind for Southampton. And then he kind of like pops up in other places occasionally. And due to the Southampton story spreading around, now the kind of George Ware thing has come out and people have disproved it. But at no point does Ali Deer be like, you got me. He digs in. And it's like, if people don't want to believe me, they don't have to, but I'm not a con man. Like my talent is evident while like falling over a ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So did they know he wasn't the cousin or they just thought, oh, he's the cousin, but he's rubbish. Cause that can happen. Oh well. no. They realized like, uh, they realized afterwards. They're like, oh, we've been fucking had here. Fuck like no. they realized that did George, George would- ever, ever comment on it at all. Not really, because like it's really got nothing to do with George yeah, Ware, yeah. apart we, from the fact that it was his name. Should we contact the Liberian like government press office? Yeah. And <laughs> to get a statement. <laughs> well, so, DNA test George. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so that's it. He lasted two weeks, and now he's gone. I, there was a Bleacher Report um, article about trying to find him and what yeah. happened afterwards, and he's gone maybe the closest you can go to completely off the grid like the last thing they could find was in like the mid 2000s he had registered like his linkedin said he was part of some company that he was the president of but when you looked into the company (laughs) in the country it was not registered or anything so it was clearly like a shell (laughs) where the bleach art journalists are like busting a hotel room and they just see it all trash and they're touching the bones like still warm (laughs) he's uh, (laughs) he's gone do you think he's worried that uh he can get done for for the stuff at Southampton. Like, what, and there must be a statute of limitations. I don't think sure. so. You can't like, get, can't uh, get yeah. done for it now. Like, I mean, well, I think it would be more embarrassing. What do you get done yeah. for? Well, like, they can sue him for yeah. misrepresenting. Yeah. Con so. them. 
I've yeah. been texting him. He's playing futsal with us on Thursday. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if he gets on the bench. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, right. that's, uh, that's Southampton's yeah, alley. So that's a great story. A trillion dollar fucking industry now, whatever the Premier League is back then, was literally just like... Just no, fu- no, no internet, no radio. Yeah, yeah. 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 You know what yeah. I mean? Like it's unreal. And that I think would have been only the third or fourth year of the Premier League. Yeah, early so days. Like, 96? Yeah, was this 96, so 97. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it would have been early doors and they would have been like, this is the big league, the big yeah, money, yeah. we've got Sky Sports, oh, but yeah. the sun, like I could have, been like, I've got my mate, it's the great Benzlinio. Uh, he's Pele. Yeah, like he like yeah. shows up being white. He's like, hey, caramba. And they're like, all right, give him a game and a contract. Yeah, yeah, yeah. let's see. Let's just see. Yeah. <laughs> it could be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Shit. Uh, well, should we wrap? We got the last two questions. Yeah, yeah. So obviously we asked two questions to finish the podcast. The first mm-hmm. is, if someone says, George, I'm coming to Lymington and I need an itinerary, do you have something to recommend? Morning, after the new night what do you do in Lincoln? even just the new forest area oh right? yeah new yeah. forest oh, area okay too. yeah well morning you're going to that truffle shop yeah yeah if it's still going okay. yeah. strong extra yeah. strong bring bring a <laughs> bottle of water because you're yeah. gonna be dehydrated yeah. 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 salty yeah. fucking thing absolutely uh, what do i look like some sort of pussy to you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i'll take the meal <laughs> yeah. good bit uh, that's a good bit Oh man, and then um, we're probably going to want to go to Poundland and um, <laughs> and the Weatherspoon just to sit your middle finger yeah, up and all yeah, the absolutely. <laughs> And then obviously in the afternoon you're going uh, on a ferry to nowhere. It's, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's going to be clear. Yeah. Why not? Puffin, puffin cruises. That's Is it. that what it's called? That's, that's adorable. adorable. Puffin cruises. Oh, that's great. And then uh, finally, Jamie. Uh, did we do nighttime though? No, it was the last question. Yeah, he said finally at the end of the day. Yeah, oh, okay. get a ferry. Stop looking at that photo on your phone. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> too distracted. Final question. When all is said and done, your yeah. podcasting career has reached the greatest heights you could ever mm-hmm. hope for. Yep. Southampton have won the league. Would you move back to New Forest? Well, settle I'll, down. <laughs> I was thinking about this. I quite like urban living now, and I have to say it's the opposite of urban living. Yeah. New Forest. <laughs> but then also there's lots of old people there, so there must be something to it when you get older, some kind of magnetism to the New Forest. So yeah. exactly. I That's think right. for the time being... No fucking way. No way. <laughs> but See, I'm not like, going to abide off in George. the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Man, yeah. Like straight back in there. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Running through the graveyard. Yeah. The graveyard. Yeah. <laughs> Complaining in many ways, that's a, that's a perfect answer. Yeah. 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 That's probably the real... Yeah, um, exactly. George, do you have anything you want to plug? Um, well, I'll talk to you quickly about my podcast, Must Watch with George and Alan. Yeah, yeah we'll it. It. That's it. Uh, over 100, well, coming up to our 101st episode. Wow. It's just a fun little variety show. Hopefully we'll have you three on, not all at the same time, because <laughs> yeah, I don't have the much. facilities for that. Too but, uh, funny. <laughs> <laughs> too many laughs. I think yeah. we've all been on in the past yeah. episodes. Oh, have to have you back. Fun but uh, yeah, I really appreciate you guys having me on. It's my first ever time I've been on someone else's podcast. Whoa. Can you believe that? Oh, hell yeah. Think of all the stuff I've done for George. The great app. Yeah, that's great. So Must Watch George and Alan. That's it. Available Check everywhere. It out. And Check when do you release your pod? What apps? Apps um, go up? Yeah, Tuesday evening. Tuesday up. evening. That's yeah. right. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Thanks so much for coming on, man. Dude, thanks and for having um, me. It's been like, awesome. always, like and subscribe. Watch us on YouTube. Yeah. We've yep. got a new we, 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 custom 100. URL for YouTube. Hell so we're yeah. on youtube.com slash community notice board podcast. And if you do watch the YouTube, well, yeah, I guess you'd be watching this now. If you do watch it, uh, and you want me to put the images and edit them in because I know Dave McDevin, huge fan, great friend of ours. Super fan. He got five beers in at a party and I was like, put the images in the fucking thing. And I'm like, all right, dude, it just takes time. So I'd love to. I will do it. If more, if one more person other than Dave says do it, I'll do it. Okay. Uh, so we put the photo with the goat. Maybe you'll see it. I yeah. don't know. Uh, it's just effort. Yeah, yeah no. and who wants to put a challenge in? to you, the audience, <laughs> the audience to make us do one other job. person other than Dave? Uh, but anyway, thanks everybody. Yep. Yep. Awesome, and thanks George. We'll thanks see you George. next week. See you guys. Thanks, guys. Bye. See you.